Thank you. Uh, welcome, everyone. Um, welcome to this presentation. So today, I will talk about data unit tests and what they are exactly and why we need them. But first, let me ask a really quick question. Who is having data quality issues? Please raise your hand. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm also in the, yeah. So let's go into the agenda. And I will begin with a short introduction. And with that, I will uh, after define what are data unit tests and explain their importance, and especially when we are, want to build data products. Then we'll go into, uh, I will present some frameworks that you can use to perform data unit tests, and I will also show some, show some, some live code. And then in third, I will sh explain how we uh, tackle it at Get Your Guide, my company. And finally, I will conclude and open for questions and also discussions. Um, yes, let's get started. So, as Lila said, so I will present myself. So, I'm Theodore, data scientist at Get Your Guide. And actually, in my company, what we do is we build a marketplace for travel experiences. And especially in my team, we are responsible for the uh, recommendations and the ranking of the experiences on the platform. So that means that we actually uh, rely heavily on the data uh, that we have to achieve our goals. That means that like, we're building data products. So. And that's why today I want to talk um, about data unit tests, because data, uh, data products actually combine the code and the data. And you need both to have something that is useful for the, the business at the end. Actually, if we, in classical software development, it's a common practice to ensure the quality of your, of your product with automated tests. And actually, here you focus, your, uh, test, uh, you focus on testing the code. However, if you want to ensure the quality of your data product, then you need to uh, validate not only the code, but you should validate the data. Makes sense, right? And one way to validate the data, then, is to have tests. Well, data unit tests. And let's, let's step back, actually. If you work on an organization that has multiple engineering teams, the, probably the code uh, is owned by the team that you are working on. And you probably have the, you have the one that has the most context around the, the data product that you're building. So when you are changing it, you know that you are changing it and you have the full context around it. However, if the company or organization is a certain size, you are n your, the data that you are using is not produced by you and not transformed by you. It's transformed by other teams, right? And they probably do not have the full context of how you are using the data afterwards. And just an example in my company, and I think we are pretty normal here, like for our, uh, for our ranking and our recommended algorithm, we are combining around 15 uh, different data sources, but we are not owning the, the production of this data or the transformation of this data. So what are data unit tests? Data unit tests, let's dive into a really uh, more precise definition, is some kind of expectations that you have on, the, uh, on your production data, so the data you will use for your data products. So, so example, I think you have to make a clear distinction between testing, like, for example, if you, are, if you want to test that your algorithm is able to handle some null value, that's a unit test, like a normal unit, a code unit test. That's, you should do that. that, that's great. However, testing that the data set you will use to train your model or to, uh, to pass through your pipeline does not have null, this is where you need data unit tests to be sure that it's not happening. And so some examples of things that you might want to check, um, for example, you might want to check that uh, uh, the mean, the max of the average of a column uh, value uh, is OK. You might want to check that. You are not. Uh, you do not have to. Uh, do not have null value, or at least not too many missing value. You might expect to have some null, but not expect to have more than 50% of them. 
you might verify that you don't have too many duplicates colon, or, like, or that you do not have duplicates colon, or not too many of them. It depends on the, what's, what you expect from your data. And another example, the number of samples that you have is reasonable. You probably have some expectation all around that, and that's the kind of thing that you can check with data unit tests. Great. So now that we have a more precise idea of data unit tests, then let's look at the main frameworks that you can, uh, that you can use to perform them. And I think the first one I want to talk about is a Great Expectation. So it's the most active projects, and it supports actually most of the formats. So you can use SQL, you can connect it with some um, uh, with databases, and you can also use pandas. Uh, and also PySpark. So that's, I think, one the, the main formats that uh, people are using. So that's pretty great. They also uh, render some uh, data documentation. So it's a kind of a human readable documentation about around the data that, um, uh, around the data expectation that you have. So all the data unit tests that you are building with them. Then uh, we have Pandera, which is also quite active and actually uh, that has no company behind. Uh, to the opposite of great expectations, so it's like open source maintained by uh, benevol people. Um, and it, the thing, it's mainly built for Pandas. They just added the, the PySpark uh, support very recently, and actually they are using the PySpark a, uh, .pandas API to do that, so they are transforming everything into Pandas to do this, uh, this check. Um, and here, the, the, the thing is they are more focused on validating the schema, uh, whereas Great Expectation is more taking a global approach and taking more things than just the schema. And also, they do not have uh, visualizations, like data, the data, kind of data documentation that Great Expectation proposes. Then uh, we have also uh, TensorFlow data validation, which is part of TensorFlow Extended, where I was uh, quite surprised, so it still has it's quite have uh, some stars, but actually it's not very active at the moment. And uh, the I think another drawback is also it's quite integrated with the TensorFlow ecosystem. So if you're not full in TensorFlow, then probably it's hard to to integrate it with something else with the rest of your infrastructure. And finally, uh, Soda, uh, which is I. I of uh, what I researched, uh, very similar to Great Expectation. It's a more recent project. Uh, they also propose like SQL, PySpark, uh, uh, but also uh, they are newer, so I, I think we can, uh, they also why they have less popularity on GitHub and everything, but I, I see them I, really in the same space than Great Expectation. And so, to conclude, I think the, the most mature and the most feature complete library is Great Expectations. And then I will just focus on that for the, for, to explain a bit more how you can build expectations and show the live code. So let's dive into some of the main features of Great Expectation. So first, you have this concept of expectation. So it's kind of assertion about the data, and that's basically what uh, we call like, this data unit test. You, the most common use case actually are already implemented in the library, so you don't have to do it. So if you want to check that um, a colon do not have null, that a uh, colon uh, min, and, uh, min and max is uh, in these uh, values, that the mean, the, the median, etc., all these kind of basic uh, things are already implemented there. And also they render this, uh, sorry. And of course, if you have some very specific use case, then you can always add them. So you can add your, your specific use case, uh, specific assertion that you want to do. You can also implement them by yourself. Then what I also have is uh, data profiling. So what you can do is actually load a data set that you know is good, that you, 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 you manual check, and then basically pass it to this profiling, and that will give you a draft of expectation that you can use. You will still need to modify them. It's not perfect, but at least you don't start from scratch. Then they also have, of course, when you have all this data, the, this, uh, this expectation, then, uh, then you want to do some validation, and so you can validate new data sets 
um, with a defined collection of expectations that you built before. And you are, can also get some alerting via email, slacks, if something is going wrong. And finally, uh, data documentation. And you can think of, uh, so it's auto-rendered documentation of the data that you, that you, you are checking. Or, and you can think of a constantly updated data quality reports. But I think that code is, more, is worth more than 1,000 slides. So I will show you um, how to create some data unit tests using great expectation. And yes, because so I'm French, actually. It might have heard from the accent. Um, so I will we'll talk about wine. Um, so I, I took the, the wine quality data set. So actually, it's composed of two data sets, the red wine data sets that we will use to generate the test. And then we'll uh, load the white wine data set. And that's the one we will try to validate based on the test that we'll build on the red wine. So here I'm using Databricks, uh, which is something that we heavily use in my company. But you can work actually with uh, other clouds. or It's actually a Jupyter notebook based more than uh, Databricks based. Yeah, so let's get started. So we need to install great expectation. Then we need to have uh, to import the thing in the library. And then we can uh, load the RAID the red wine data set. And basically, like we have a different columns, and uh, at the end, like about some measurement about the wine, and at the end, uh, we have a quality score, which is an integer between 0 and 10. And so we'll focus on two main columns, the sulfates here, and the quality. That's the two ones that we'll, make, that we'll focus on for this uh, presentation. So then let's set up some uh, the to set up to run great expectation on databricks and for the sake of time actually so uh, we can dive into the code so you have the the link i will share the slide at the end and you have the link to this notebook and so you can also clone it run it check the code itself but for the sake of time i will not go into the the code to set up uh, great expectation on databricks but what's important is at the end we get a validator which is basically an object which we can use to build tests. And in here, you will already have the data set, the red wine data set attached to, to this object, and you can run directly there. And so let's build data unit tests. So the first one, um, as a part of the documentation, uh, indeed, we expect the column quality we, to be in the range between 0 and 10. So it should be an integer in this range. So let's run the let's do the test, and actually it will run on this red wine dataset. And it did, yes. The observed value are between three and eight, actually. No, no, not the full scale. And we get some results, and the test uh, succeed. Great, looks good. Then let's run the second test. And so for that, uh, what we will do is uh, let's we want to expect like the sulfur distribution. Uh, on the data, uh, the data set to be to be fixed. So first, we will build an histogram from the current data set, and then we will perform a callback a Leibler divergence test. Um, so in practice, that means that if the distribution of the data set that you put is very different or uh, different from this histogram, then the test will fail. So basically, just check that you have the same distribution. And so we can run this test also. And yes, and we get like the different bins and things like that. So when we are done, what we can do basically is save the uh, expectation suite. So that's the collection of expectation that we just built. And once it's done, then we can actually generate some uh, documentation about the, uh, the code that we just put. And here, what we have basically is a human-readable uh, format where uh, HTML 
uh, that can basically explain like what, what we just built. So actually the quality, we expect the value to be between 0 and 10, and we expect the distribution to be similar to this. Which is great. I think that's something that you can share with any of your stakeholders, and they don't need to go into the code to say, oh, that's exactly, I mean, you can show them something much nicer than some GitHub uh, code base. So now we are done. Um, let's load the new, uh, the white wine data sets. And yes, and we see pretty similar. They have the same columns and also software and quality. And let's run the test on this wine data set. So here, perfect. And let's run the test also. And at the end, what you get is a automatic report. So basically, you have another HTML, and here you will get. Uh, see, we have like 50%. Uh, so actually, we have one failure. So let's look into the report. So the quality is indeed between zero and ten. Also, actually, we see we also have the value nine that appeared that we didn't have before. Sorry, yes, here, and. Then actually, the sulfates, what happened is the callback divergence, uh, callback liber divergence test failed. And we can see directly that's the expectation that we had about the, the distribution and the observed value is different that made the test fail. And also, that's pretty nice. Like, you start with that when, if you want to, to start with that when you want to debug what's happening in your data set. And yeah, that's it. So show you how you can, sorry, uh, start this of the live code, I still go back to the presentations. <laughs> yes. So show you how you can build data unit tests. I will now share a bit more how we tackle that at Get Your Guide. And so for that, um, I will explain. Uh, I would like to explain how we uh, how we introduce the uh, uh, data unit test. But first, let me share some of the incident I actually trigger these initiatives. And if that feel similar to what or things that sounds that could happen to your company, yeah, that's probably um, time to add things like that. So actually, what happened in the past is like, for example, we have a change in the data structure. Uh, that led actually to uh, introduce some duplicates uh, in our, our recommendations. We also had another time where we had uh, we discovered that we had a missing feature that we use for our daily prediction data sets. Uh, and also what happened once is that we used the wrong column actually that was uh, to select for the scoring of the, our recommendations. So that's not a great thing. That's the thing, that's thing that you can prevent. And so, actually, we took action to make sure that this kind of thing do not happen again. And what we did is actually, for example, great expectation now, we use it to validate our recommendations and, uh, and before we push them to, to production. Um, we also introduce uh, some in-house validator with actually some integration with Datadog uh, that uh, push uh, uh, sorry, that push some metrics to Datadog and uh, set some alerting if we have some uh, some things that are going wrong. So that we use to validate our main events that we use for our pipeline and also to our output predictions. And finally, uh, recently we also introduced some health check as part of our continuous integration um, uh, pipeline and also that is also run daily uh, in our in our runs uh, to, to do our predictions. And yes, with that, um, our conclusion. So here in this presentation, I try to share the importance of testing your data, uh, especially in your data products. That's It's actually commonly accepted that you should test your code, but I think that we don't discuss enough about testing the data. Uh, but it's as important, or maybe even more. And I think that's a domain that needs more awareness. And I think, like, uh, from what we have, so uh, we don't have a silver bullet that we use at Get Your Guide at the moment. Um, 
so that we can use to validate all the data that we have. Um, but uh, as you see, we tested multiple approach, but there is no clear winner that we say, oh, we can use that for all use cases. And yes, it's quite exciting to see the space evolving. There are libraries that pop up and that evolves. Um, yeah, looking, looking forward to the future of the space. Thank you. It's better otherwise I don't think the people are uh, online yeah. will hear. I'm coming up. <laughs> um, you were talking about Pandera as an alternative, but um, uh, we were actually looking at using both grade expectations in Pandera, just because of this difference in like runtime checks kind of thing, especially for services, I guess Pandera can do some stuff that you could miss if you run daily with grade expectations or something. Just wondering if you had any thoughts on that. So in using Pandora and Great Expectation together, yeah. Um, so I think there is still some overlap. With, like Great Expectation can actually also check that a column is an integer or this thing. Yeah, but yeah, but I I I I I agree. I I I didn't. So I was more deeper into Great Expectation than Pandora. What I, when I looked into the, the API, it felt more like it was more oriented with thing with going to Pydentic and like checking each row more than uh, like if you look at all the checks that you can do about like statistical tests that you can do about like the um, uh, the distribution of your uh, of your column and things like that. I think great expectation is much more advanced than uh, uh, that Pandera, but using both, I mean. I think like more tests you have, safer you are. I think like and they they cover more different edge, uh, use cases. You can solve some better with one library and some with the others. And uh, actually, we have a big problem. Like we are mainly using uh, PySpark. And when last time I checked and when we looked at it, it didn't have support for PySpark, and that was like a, a no go for us. So now that they. Uh, Introduce that, and I will look deeper into that. Thank you. Uh, I'll come to you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Um, so, do you find that introducing extra data tests uh, besides the unit tests um, increases deployment time, or how do you manage that? So, so since you said that you include these data tests in the continuous integration, do you find that um, the deployment time becomes unmanageably slow? So it depends. So we have two use cases uh, where we're using it. And actually, uh, you, you can sample your data when you want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, or you run on everything. And if you have a large data set, then it's taking time. So in one of the use cases, we, we can easily sample it. And actually, it's running like two, three minutes. So great, we don't need that. I mean, we, we, we don't have this problem. The other one is taking quite some time. And the problem is we don't have a good way to sample it smartly. But we prefer to wait like four hours and make sure that it makes sense, like the, the data set makes sense, instead of just pushing it and hoping that the next day it will it will work. So, And four hours, actually, if you, if you have a PR, uh, Usually, the time that someone else uh, review it and everything is not well, uh, it's like it's not uh, one week that you need, so it's it's still reasonable. Makes but yes, sense. it's slowing it's slowing us down in uh, in this. Yeah, in this thank you. Any more questions? You can raise your hand. Thank okay, you. I think you had your right hand raised uh, for a while. I'll do a quick one. Uh, so thank you. I've never used this, and it's quite interesting. But you said in, in the very end uh, that it's no silver bullet. So I guess there's some limitations, and I'd like to hear your words on on what what can it do. <laughs> so, so yeah. So actually, I I expect. So I <laughs> yes. Uh, so great expectation. Actually, we we did some uh, I did some presentation and totally yeah, like it's actually great for PySpark and it's also integrated with Airflow that we are using. Send detailed report by email and like you can directly see what are the expectations that fail 
And this leaving Dava doc is pretty exciting. So I don't know if uh, everyone has problem with like a documentation of data. Data is changing. The documentation is not changing as fast. But uh, one thing that uh, is quite tough is the Databricks integration. I think that's pretty, like I skipped through, yeah, you can look into the code, but uh, everything is based on a Jupyter, a Jupyter notebook, basically. And if you want to integrate the Databricks, they have their own notebook, which are not Jupyter notebook. And that makes things more complicated. It's not impossible, actually, but then you have to understand much better the, 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 the great expectation library. And, uh, the second thing is actually the, it's quite an infrastructure investment, actually. It's not, it's not like in five, ten minutes you will get it running and you can put that in production. Like, it's a huge machine and they have a lot of concepts that you need to understand. You have this expectation, like, you have this data slicing, these data sources that you need to combine with other things. So, it's taking time. And actually, it's also evolving quite fast. So, they change the API. Some part have been updated, some other part have not been updated. So, and I suspect it will continue to change. So that's, that's the main challenge that we have with great expectation. The other approach are handmade, but then we don't have all the great ex features that you have with uh, a nice library like that. Uh, anyone else has questions? Please raise your hands. Okay. Many people. Okay, we have Lily? time. Um, I, I think the, he, oh. <laughs> he was asking okay. for quite some time. <laughs> Short question, do you have ex uh, experience on data tests with text data? Uh, great question. No, we don't, we don't have so much uh, text uh, that we are testing, but I, yeah, you will need to, to write your, your own test. I, I, don't, I, I haven't seen anything in the great expectation library about testing that. If you can raise your hands again, please. <laughs> okay, I will start with him. Um. Thank you. Uh, can you elaborate on like the different use cases where you could apply data unit tests and where you found it most useful? For example, like validating new input data or maybe validating like different test sets for being a fit for actually your training? Yeah. Um, so we are... We are mainly using it for input and output. So input, for example, that's, is in-house event validator that we use. Like we have, we have events that we use to, to train our model. Like we, we need to know how many uh, how many people view these activities. We need to know how many people click on it, how many people book them afterwards, and so then we need to kind of pipe them together. So these are the visitor ID. Then we need to combine it with somewhere else. And that's, that's how we want to check that if the, if the schema is changing in some way and that suddenly we have a problem and like we don't have any match anymore, we want to be alerted of that. That's, that means that some team somewhere change the way they, they handle or send the events, and we, we should alert that because then suddenly we don't have any more bookings or something like that. So that's how we use that on the input, and on the output is like we want to make sure that the, the final uh, uh, prediction that we, we make, like uh, after we train our model, um, that uh, makes sense. And that's where actually where a great expectation made, uh, made a lot of sense. So we already had some kind of, we call it canary step, uh, but it was like handmade and it was like, it was failing, but we did not know why exactly it was failing. And that great expectation really helped us to, when it's failing now, we know exactly what is failing. We know like, Oh, this was the distribution that we had before. This is the distribution. I mean, that's the distribution that we expect. That's what we have is, it's just zero. There is something wrong. We should directly check that, and that's how that helps us here. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. Perfect. I think. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I was wondering if you can share your experience regarding. Um, uh, testing the producer contract, for example, because you're now talking mostly about the data has already landed somewhere, you know, for example, in S3 or some data storage, and then you start to use it inside the machine learning algorithm. Could you share maybe your experience? How can you avoid having faulty data in the data lake itself? I don't know if you have some contract between the producer of the data or something else in place. 
So if we, if we have, just to make sure I understand the question, you're asking if we have some kind of contracts between the producer and the... Uh, yes, we, we have, of course, and that's... that's we, uh, we, have the, we have documentation around the data and we expect our consumer, uh, like the, the products team that are building the different components of the website to send certain type of events and that we could use them. And we also had uh, also, how to say, uh, when they do some kind of migration, because as the product evolve, p things change, and we 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 need to uh, they they do some announcements, and we have this kind of rollback. The thing is, you probably if you see some announcement by email, are you sure that the data structure change that they propose will not affect your algorithm? Like what we had uh, in the past, like they change that structure. We say, well, that's fine. I mean. And then we, we, we had some instant, like we, we discovered that actually we introduced some duplicates because we were adding the same columns multiple times. It was, it was communicated before that we, we saw this information, so all the contracts were there, but did we spend, did we, did we have like the f really full picture of how this change will impact our algorithm? Like we, you basically have to reread all your code suddenly to see, oh, okay, now I might have this thing duplicates here. How will that happen? And actually what happened is like we started joining with other data frame and we always expect like to have the, the spine to be unique. And if and the other join was always not unique. And every time like we are multiplying the things uh, because they are the same one. And it's not something that was trivial to, to check because we always expect that when we build the code, and when we say they change the data structure, we did not think, oh, that will change this part of the code. That's, that's the expectation that we had at some point. So I think it's better to have this test. And actually, that's, that's why you write data unit tests, right? I, uh, sorry, you, unit tests also. You, you want to make sure that the thing that you build, the expectation that you have, will still stand in the future. Okay, I think we have time for one last question. Yeah, I'll try to get to you. <laughs> Could you please pass him? Uh, thanks a lot for the great talk. Um, I'm wondering what are the consequences of an error? Like, is it just uh, an alert in a Slack channel everybody has muted anyway, or is it really like there's a data scientist that is on pager duty, <laughs> and then there's a severity check, and then if things really get out of hand, there's a whole team that then, I don't know, gets to it? Or like, what processes have you defined when there's actually a data error? It depends, like, the, 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 that's a good question because it really depends on the error, right? If you, if you expect to have 10,000 rows and you have 10,001, that's probably not the same error than if you have 10 million suddenly. Uh, so what we, what we do actually is, in this, in this case, what we do is we basically don't push to production. Like if we have a test, basically we stay, well, prefer use the data of yesterday than using the data of today. And so we will not push the new, uh, the new version with the test that failed. So that gives us some time and we, we know that it's not ideal to have the data of yesterday and still be running it today, but it's probably much better than having something um, having something that might be completely wrong. So that's the way we, we handle that uh, in general. And basically, we, we then that gives us the, the day, like, or two days, the time that we need. We know that it's not ideal, but we are not like shutting down everything because we cannot push a new version. So yeah, and we get alert by email and uh, Slack this way. Yes, and yeah, if you are, by the way, we are hurrying, so if you're interested, do not hesitate to come. Yes, sorry. That's I think that was <laughs> the last question, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.